The Land of Stories, The Wishing Spell, Chapter 15, The Northern Kingdom. Alex and Connor traveled into the Northern Kingdom by boat, at first for the twins. They found a fisherman just about to travel up the river into the kingdom and persuaded him to let them come aboard. Alex said they were lost and pretended to cry. She was very convincing, too. Connor, however, was not. He tried to join in on the performance, and things just became awkward. Thankfully, the fishermen allowed them to travel with him anyway. The boat was small and flat and had just enough room for the three of them. It traveled perfectly along with the river's current, so they didn't even need to row. The twins were enjoying the ride and were able to appreciate the scenery, pointing out every riverside village they saw. It was nice to travel without fear of a wolf or an ogre running up from behind them. The northern kingdom was very misty and cool. The twins could tell it was the type of place that would become freezing in the winter. The kingdom was covered with grassy fields and several bodies of water. An icy, steep mountain range bordered the north. The boat traveled along the river and poured into Swan Lake, which was appropriately inhabited by many swans and other birds. Snow White's palace sat on the edge of Swan Lake. It was short but wide, with tan marble walls, dark green domes, and several colorful stained glass windows, including an especially large one shaped as bright as a red apple. What's up with all the apple tributes? Connor asked. Didn't the apple almost kill Snow White? Why does she have it displayed every chance she gets? I suppose it's symbolic for the kingdom, like a cross in a church, Alex said, giving her best educated guess. There were no towns or villages near the palace. It had been built away from everything else and was in an isolated world of its own. It seemed like such a lovely place. Alex had spent some time with her nose in the journal, rereading everything she could in case she'd missed something. She put it away and began searching the shore until she finally spotted what she was looking for. Excuse me, sir, Alex said to the fisherman. Can you please drop us off at the river bank? The fisherman steered the boat in that direction and the twins got off and said goodbye to him. Why are we getting off here? Connor asked. The palace is that way. Connor, I'm tired of explaining everything to you. Here she said, and handed him the journal. He read the pages that she had been looking over during their trip on the boat. Snow White's palace overlooks Swan Lake, and part of the lake flows into the moat circling the palace, which works to the advantage of anyone trying to sneak into the palace unnoticed. There is a hidden gate at the bottom of the palace that the moat runs through. It's right by the dungeon and is used to transport prisoners into and out of the palace by boat. It's easy to swim under the gate and then climb up onto the dock inside. The glass coffin is in a large storage room that used to be the evil queen's private chamber on the third floor. On the second floor, you'll find a large portrait of the evil queen herself just past the grand staircase off the main entrance. The portrait is actually a secret door that leads up to the chamber. Travel at night so it's difficult for anyone to spot you in the water. But note that Swan Lake waters are very deep and can be rough after sundown. Use something as a flotation device, like a log or a piece of wood. Alex was standing next to a log that had washed ashore on the riverbed, and she gestured down to it. See? Alex said. Gotcha, Connor said. The twins waited for nightfall to travel across the river to the palace. They carefully placed the log into the river and then entered the water themselves. It was unbearably cold. Connor made a high-pitched gasping sound as soon as he was waist-deep. Whew, it's cold. I think we may be twin sisters now, he said through rattling teeth. I don't think I, I've ever been this cold in my entire life. Just keep thinking that we only have two more items left to collect. And we'll be home, Alex said, shivering herself. Jewels from Snow White's coffin and the saber from the deepest sea, Connor repeated to himself. Jewels from Snow White's coffin and saber from the deepest sea. Nope, I'm still cold. They held onto the log and drifted onto the current to the palace. Having the log was a good call since the water was very choppy and the twins were getting tired just by holding onto it. They probably would have drowned without it. The closer they got to the palace, the more soldiers they saw marching the grounds. There are so many soldiers, Connor said through shivering teeth. It's because of the evil queen, Alex said. I doubt there was this much surveillance when the man from the journal came. 
The twins submerged themselves completely whenever they thought a soldier might be able to see them. They steered the log into the palace's moat, careful not to make a splash or cause too many ripples. They had to circle the palace twice, but eventually they found the secret gate. They let go of the log and swam under the gate. It was a much deeper dive than they had thought. Connor came to the surface on the other side and was gasping for air. He treaded water for a moment, waiting for his sister to surface, but she didn't. Alex? Connor said, looking for her in the water around him. Alex? Connor dove back underwater. He found Alex struggling under the gate. One of the straps on her bag had caught when she'd swum under. She was stuck, and she desperately needed air. Connor swam down to her and yanked on her bag as hard as he could to set his sister free, but it wouldn't budge. He tugged harder, and the strap finally ripped off. He helped Alex get to the surface. She was breathing harder than he had ever heard her breathe before. She had been seconds away from drowning. Connor helped her over to the dock, and they both climbed on top of it. They were both so alarmed that they had forgotten how cold they were. Thank you, Alex said when she had caught her breath. That was really brave of you. I didn't have a choice, Connor said. You had all the wishing spell items in your bag. Alex playfully hit him, and they quietly laughed. They were drenched, and their jaws were chattering so hard that the sound of it echoed around them. The only way out was through a stone doorway. The twins peered inside it and saw a long hallway. At one end was a spiral staircase leading down, to the dungeon, they assumed, and at the other was a spiral staircase leading up. They chose the staircase leading up. It led straight to another hall with a steamy odor in the air. It was very humid inside this part of the palace, and the twins soon walked by an open door and saw why. Look, it's the laundry room, Alex said. The room was full of large steaming tubs of water, and several garments and sheets were hung up to dry around the room. It was past working hours, so the room was empty. I have an idea, Alex said and darted inside the room. What are you doing? Connor asked her. She started digging through a pile of what Connor hoped were clean clothes and linen. If the grounds outside are all any indication, I bet the halls of the palace are swarming with soldiers, she said. And? Connor said. We're going to seem very suspicious walking around soaked to the bone in our t-shirt and jeans, she explained. She pulled out two dresses and two lacy caps from the basket. No way! Connor said, realizing what she intended to do with them. Absolutely not. Connor, put your pride aside and get dressed. We've come way too far to get caught now, she said, pulling one of the dresses over her head. The guys at school can never know about this, Connor said with a very serious face. If your friends find out you traveled into the fairy tale world, I doubt this would be what they were most interested in hearing about, Alex said. The twins got dressed and looked almost identical in the same outfit. They wrapped their wet clothes in bags and towels and then carried the towels to look busy. They journeyed higher into the palace, perfectly disguised as two maids working a night shift. The palace had beautiful marble floors and walls on the inside as well. The stained glass windows were even more beautiful, with moonlight shining through them. Alex was right. Every hall and corridor was under constant watch by soldiers. Connor was too embarrassed to look any of them in the eye. He did find a few gold coins in the pockets of his maid's uniform. However, which made him feel better... Alex and Connor found the grand staircase in the middle of the palace. They climbed into the second floor and began scanning the halls for a portrait of the evil queen. Like Cinderella's palace, there were portraits of past rulers framed on the walls and statues of all seven of the dwarfs that have helped Snow White. How do we know what the evil queen looks like? Connor asked. We've never even seen her before. We'll just have to guess, Alex said. They walked past a portrait of a woman sitting in a garden. All the plants and flowers were bright around her, but she wore a long, dark gown. The woman was beautiful, but she had a blank, cold expression on her face. That's her, Alex said. There was something about the woman's eyes in the portrait that made Alex sure of it. They were beautiful, but they seemed so empty, as if all the happiness had been drained out of her soul. Alex waited for two soldiers to leave the hall and then tried pulling on the portrait. It was stuck. She pulled harder, and it still didn't budge. Are you sure that's it? Connor said. Oh, 100%, Alex said. She gave it another good tug, and the portrait swung away from the wall like an open door. Behind the portrait was a wooden ladder that went up to the third floor. Nice one, Connor said, and gave his sister a high five. The twins climbed up the ladder and found the back of another secret door. 
The twins entered the storage chamber from behind an exact replica of the portrait they had just gone through on the second floor. The whole room was filled with old furniture covered in white sheets and old trunks and chests. The portrait the twins had climbed through was the only painting hung on the walls. The rest were stacked in piles against the walls around the room. The room was long and had a set of heavy double doors at one end and a raised platform with curtains around it at the other end. The twins knew without a doubt that this place was where the evil queen had kept her magic mirrors. There was a large counter with tubes, vials, and glass containers. They had all been emptied out, but the twins knew it must have been where the evil queen had kept her potions. This room gives me the creeps, Connor said. Looks like no one has been here for years. I don't see the glass coffin anywhere, Alex said. She started uncovering the furniture, trying to find it, but it wasn't in the room. The coffin isn't here, she said, feeling a rush of panic come over her. Let's just look around. Look around for what? For anything, yelled Alex, frustrated and upset. Try and find anything that says where the glass coffin may have been taken. The twins searched from the room from the top to the bottom. They looked through all the trunks and cases, but found nothing that gave any sign of where it might be. There were so many years of memories packed away in this room, it was impossible to tell what had belonged to the evil queen or to Snow White or the rulers before them. Alex was going through a sack of parchments. She found interesting handwriting letters among them that she couldn't help but read. The first letter had masculine handwriting and said, Dear Evely, I love you more than a bird loves the morning sun. Every second I'm away from you is a moment wasted. I am yours forever. Myra. The next was written by a woman and said, Dearest Myra, you are the last thing I think about before I sleep, and the first thing I think about when I wake up, and the time in between is filled with a longing to be in your arms. My heart is yours, and yours alone. Evely. The letters between the two lovers continued. The handwriting on the next letter seemed rush. Evely. It is the cruelest punishment possible to be kept from you. Not being able to touch your skin or kiss your lips has made my soul hurt. I am hollow without you. I will save you from this wickedness, I swear. Myra. Alex could see tiny circles on the paper. Teardrops, she figured. The letters were wrinkled from having been held so tight. Myra, the thought of being with you again is what keeps my heart beating. Every day is a day spent searching for a way to be with you. I live for you. I love you with every breath I take. Evely. They were short but so passionate, Alex felt her own heart beating faster after reading them. She looked for more but found none. Alex, Connor said, come take a look at this. He was going through the painting stacked against the wall and had found one that made his heart drop. Connor pulled a large portrait out from the stack. It was of a tall, grizzled man with a bushy brown beard. He wore a large coat and held a crossbow. That must be the evil queen's huntsman, Alex said. I bet, Connor said, but look closer. Alex took a second look and saw that partially hidden behind the huntsman in the portrait was a little girl. She had bright green eyes and hair that was so dark red it seemed purple. It can't be, Alex said. The twins felt sick to their stomachs. It was the woman they had seen in the Red Riding Hood's castle. Her features and hair color were too distinctive for it not to be. So is she the huntsman's daughter? Connor asked. She must be, Alex said. I didn't even know he had a daughter, Connor said. What does she want with the wishing spell? Alex thought about it. She barely knew anything about the huntsman. She knew nothing about his daughter. While the wheel spun in her head, coming up with different possibilities, a horrifying thought came across her. <gasps> what if she's not collecting them for herself? What if she's collecting them for the evil queen? Alex said. Connor's face went white, and he shook his head. No, he said. What would she want with the wishing spell? It makes sense, Alex said. She couldn't deny the facts. She escaped from prison for a reason. She has something unfinished, maybe revenge or something bigger, something she can't complete herself. What if she needs it for so the same reason we do, Connor asked. What if she's trying to get into our world? The idea hadn't occurred to Alex. She looked back at the portrait of the evil queen on the wall. She stared at the painted face and tried to find the answers in her lifeless eyes. What could she be planning? The twins heard a set of footsteps outside the chamber. The door was unlocked from the outside, and someone started to open it. Quick, hide, Connor said. He and Alex jumped inside one of the bigger trunks and shut the lid, leaving it open just a crack so they could still see the room. Your Majesty, said a booming man's voice from farther down the hall, and whoever was opening the door stopped. 
Yes, what is it? said a woman's voice just behind the door. My men and I have returned, the man said. We've searched everywhere, and there is still no sign of your stepmother. The twins recognized his voice. It was Sir Grant, the soldier who had made the announcement about the evil queen in the charming kingdom during the ball. Oh, said the woman. Your Highness, forgive me for asking again, but you were the last person to see her in the palace before she escaped. Are you sure there isn't anything you could tell us about that night? Any detail or clue, something she would have give us an idea of where she was going? Sir Grant asked. I've told you countless times I don't remember anything of the sort, the woman said. I went to simply say a few things that had been on my mind, and once I was done, so I left. Your Highness, it's only a matter of time before she strikes, before she poisons a river and kills half a kingdom or something worse. Grant said, you knew her better than anyone else. For your own safety, please inform us immediately if you remember anything else. You will be the first I inform if any memories surface, she said. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to be alone. Sir Grant returned down the hall. The woman slowly turned the handle of the chamber door and opened it. She was a beautiful woman with the darkest hair and the lightest skin the twins had ever seen. It's Snow White, Alex whispered to Connor and squeezed his arm. She wore a white gown and matching overcoat. She stood in the doorway for a moment, just looking at the room before she entered it. It seemed hard for her to be in the room where so many attempts on her life had once been planned. The way she surveyed everything around her made the twins assume she hadn't been inside this room in a very long time. Snow White entered the room and locked the door behind her. She walked around the room and carefully went through all the things just as the twins had done. She went to the stack of old books. She went through the pages of one that was black and had a large skull on its cover. Snow White flipped through its pages until she let out a tiny gasp and dropped the book. The twins could see from the open book lying on the ground that she had discovered the page with the recipe for a poisoned apple. She took a seat on the platform behind her and began crying, burying her face into her hands. The whole situation seemed to have taken a toll on the young queen. We should ask her where the coffin is, Alex whispered to Connor. Are you sure? She seems like she needs a moment, Connor said. Unfortunately, we don't have a moment to spare, Alex said. Alex slowly stood in the trunk and pushed open the lid. Your Majesty, she said softly. Snow White gasped. She was startled and embarrassed to see what, that she wasn't alone. Who are you? She asked, how did you get in here? Boy, if we had a nickel every time someone asked us that, we could afford our own palace to sneak into, said Connor, standing up beside his sister. We don't mean any harm, Miss White. We just need to ask you a question and then we'll be gone, Alex said. First, tell me how you got in here, Snow White said. The portrait, Connor said, there's a secret ladder that leads down to the second floor. Connor, don't give away all our secrets, Alex said. I know that, Snow White said. I used it when I would sneak into this room as a little girl. How did you know about it? We read about it somewhere, said Connor, waving his hands like the subject wasn't a big deal. You seem like nice children, but you shouldn't be sneaking into places where you don't belong, Snow White said. There are very dangerous times we're living in. Tell me about it, Connor said with a snort. We completely agree and promise never to do it again, Alex said. We were just wondering where your glass coffin might be. Snow White looked at them uneasily. It was such a bizarre question. It was moved, she said. To where? Connor asked. I gave it back to the dwarfs, Snow White said. It was beautiful, but as you can imagine, it was strange to have that coffin in the palace. They keep it somewhere in their minds. The twins sighed at the news. The road ahead of them had just become much harder. What on earth would you two want with my coffin? Snow White asked. They looked at each other, not sure what to tell her and what not to tell her. <sighs> we're on a bit of a scavenger hunt, Alex said, and we're in a bit of a time crunch, you see, because your stepmother may be, after all, after the same things we are. Snow White looked at them very seriously. Children, my stepmother is a very dangerous woman. If she is after something and you are in her way, she won't hesitate to kill you. She is heartless. If there is any possibility of you crossing paths with her, you must stop whatever you're doing immediately. A loud banging came from the door. Your Majesty, are you in there? A soldier asked. The king couldn't find you and is concerned. Yes, one moment, please, Snow White said and then turned to the twins. You two should go. The twins nodded and climbed up through the portrait. Promise me you'll think about what I said, 
Snow White said to them just before they shut the portrait door. Of course, Alex lied. Snow White smiled with relief and left the chamber. The twins decided to exit the palace through the main entrance since they were still disguised as servants. The dwarf mines are in the dwarf forests, which aren't very far from here, Alex said looking down at the map. Remember, Snow White ran there by foot after the huntsmen failed to kill her. We're going back into the dwarf forest? Connor said, do we have a death wish? We don't have a choice, Alex said. The twins camped out in a safe patch of woods near Snow White's palace and slept for the little night remaining. They hung their wet clothes over a tree branch to dry by the morning. They began their return into the dwarf forest. Alex's bag had only one strap now, but it worked nonetheless. They walked for a good while before they found a driver willing to give them a ride. Are you sure you want to go there? It's a very dangerous place, the driver said. Trust us, we know, Connor said. He gave the driver the coins he had found in the maid's dress the night before to further persuade him. The cart traveled down the path, past the ugly duckling pond, which Alex found incredibly amusing, and into a forest that had been logged. For miles around, there were nothing but tree stumps. It didn't make the twins sad to see all the missing trees. They had seen enough live ones recently to make up the difference. I really hope we don't run into the evil queen, Connor said during the trip. That would just suck. I just hope she doesn't already have the saber from the deepest sea, Alex said. Otherwise, we may have to cross paths. I wonder if she knows about us, Connor said. If she sent the huntsman's daughter to find Sleeping Beauty's spindle and the troll and goblin king's crown, and they both were gone, she would realize sooner or later that someone else is collecting objects for the spell. I hope she doesn't, Alex said, and then let out a sigh. <sighs> Seems like the longer we're here, the worse it gets for us. Something always comes up that makes things more difficult. Alex's face went pale and her mouth dropped open. She looked as if she had just seen a ghost. What's wrong? Connor asked. You look like you got a B on a pop quiz. He turned and looked in the direction of her gaze. In the distance, standing in the middle of the field of stumps, was a tree. That, instead of growing straight out of the ground, was curved and wound in circles like a large vine. It was unmistakably the curvy tree, the one their father had told them stories about seeing when he was a kid. You're right, Alex, Connor said. Things always find a way of becoming more complex. Like and subscribe to read chapter 16 through the minds.